but because she hasn't killed him yet. So they can achieve universally preferable behavior called thou shalt murder. But there's more. Sorry, there's a guy in there. All right. So it is impossible empirically to really achieve thou shalt murder. Does that, does that make sense? But it's impossible logically to achieve thou shalt murder. Ooh, this one's tricky. You'll see it and be like, of course. But anyone want to take a guess as to why? They, even if they kill each other at exactly the same time, why can they not logically achieve thou shalt murder? The definition of murder doesn't, is the same as killing someone. You can kill someone if they're trying to kill you and not be considered murder. Tell me a little more. I just want to make sure I understand if, that. If, if you're trying to kill me right now, do you want to come up here? No, no. Okay. no I have no ill feelings towards you, but if, <laughs> if you were try, as this man is trying to kill this lady, if she kills him to prevent him from killing her, it's not considered murder. Yeah, that's self-defense, right? Okay, but we're talking about can they both achieve? Forget self. If murder is is the good, right? Then self-defense will be the bad because it won't. But the reason, so anyone else wanted, that's a good, good point. It's not quite the, the, the true rational reason, because again, that's bringing in an outside argument called self-defense. You don't even need that. Why can they not, you, if you want to have her, if you can speak? Uh, she would have to resist me. Oh, yeah. This is a man who knows a little bit of something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stay over here while he continues to do his business. OK, well, listen, uh, so tell me more. Uh, well, for it to be murder, she would have to resist, otherwise it's something else. Right, so if it's not murder, so if, she's, if she wants to be killed, it's euthanasia, right? Yeah. Right, like if, 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 if you steal something from me, I don't want you to steal it, it's theft. If, you, if I don't mind you borrowing it, right? So the reason, not only can they not physically kill each other at the same time, but it's only murder if the lady doesn't want to be killed, and he does. So. Murder cannot be universally preferable behavior because it's only murder if the victim doesn't want it. They can't both want murder at the same time because then it's not murder. Does that make sense? I know this is tricky. Let me try it with another example. The next one is called Greco Roman Breast Nothing <laughs> <laughs> with hot oil. Um, okay, sorry, just, just one more thing. Okay. Uh, I might want this. Okay, no, that's fine. All right, so you have a lovely cupcake. What about theft is universally preferable behavior? Oh, let's do two cupcakes. I knew I kept two for a reason. There we go. All right, so theft is universally preferable behavior. So you both desperately want each other's cupcakes. Drool a little, if you can <laughs> So you both want each other's cupcakes. You can achieve it, physically, right? I mean, you can both steal from each other at the same time. I think it's not universal because theft is an act of time. Once you've got it, you're not stealing it anymore, right? But why can't it be achieved that they can take each other's cupcakes and have theft be universally preferable behavior? So, that you don't want it to happen. It's right. It's, exactly. it's only theft if you don't want it to happen. So you can have theft as UPB only if she doesn't have theft as UPB. Because if she doesn't want you to steal it, that's what makes it theft. But if she does want you to steal it, it's not theft. So if you both have theft as UPB, theft cannot occur. Does this make sense? Okay, we're not going to do the right one. Uh, I wouldn't even tell you the props I have for that, but the batteries are too expensive. Um, but assault is the same thing. It's only assault if the other person doesn't want it, right? Then it's some s and dungeon thing, whatever. But uh, thanks, I think that's, that's great. Thanks for that, I appreciate that. Uh, so these are just some examples of how you can come up with a system of ethics that says, yeah, you can achieve don't steal consistently. Two people in a room with one iPad, or two iPads, doesn't matter, can both achieve universally preferable behavior called don't steal. And they can do that just fine. You can have don't murder. 
don't assault, don't rape. These things can all be achieved by everyone all the time. No problems. But neither empirically nor conceptually can the opposites be achieved consistently. So in, in the book, which again is, is free on the website, I propose something which is a good, it's a good rule of thumb. It's not perfect, but it's a good rule of thumb called the coma test. Can a guy in a coma be doing evil? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think, I mean, I can't imagine how he, he could be, he could be doing evil. And uh, I think that's, that's an important thing, right? So if, if a guy in a coma can't be doing evil, then actions which are defined as good that are positive actions are kind of problematic because it means that he's doing the opposite of a positive action. So if you have thou shalt murder is the good, then the guy in the coma is doing the opposite of that, because he's not murdering. But he can't be doing evil, because he's in a coma. So that's a, I think that's a reasonable test. It's just sort of a first-pass test of an ethical theory. Now, I said that ethical theories need to be internally consistent, but they also need to accord with empirical reality. That's, you know, that's the test. That's a good test. So if somebody comes up and says, thou shalt steal, well, that is not even remotely internally consistent. Now, what happens to an engineer who tries to build a bridge based upon inconsistent calculations, or contradictory calculations, or incorrect calculations? Well, it doesn't always fall down. Sometimes you build it way too much, right? But it's, it's not going to be optimum for sure, and most likely it's going to fall down, right? So we would expect that societies which don't follow the four basics, right? Theft, uh, bans on theft, rape, murder, and assault, to not do very well. Right, so communism <coughs> is pretty much thou shalt steal from the state, right? I mean, according to the state, right? And so it is a bridge built on a contradiction. Because only some people are allowed to steal, those in the Politburo, and then everybody else is not, and, and all this kind of stuff. So we would expect that society to not do very well. Because it is a bridge built on incorrect, inconsistent, contradictory principles. As we, as a society, lose track of the basic moral principles that, in many ways, are sort of the common law foundation of Western civilization, how well are we doing? As we continue to have thou shalt steal through debts, through counterfeiting, through all of this sort of nonsense, we are doing progressively less well as a society. I mean, it's all masked over by massive amounts of debt and uh, being, you know, being forced to use this monopoly money that they pass off as, as, as real money. But we would expect that societies that propose behavior that is more contradictory, that have universal standards that are more contradictory, that are more problematic, for that society to get worse and worse. And quite the contrary would be true as well, that when societies put in these basic ethical rules, no stealing, no killing, no raping, no murder, that those societies would generally tend to do better. I think that you know, the big view of history, as you probably know, I mean, all the veterans here, so you've got this subsistence, subsistence, oh, Roman Empire, oh, black death, starvation, black death, subsistence, and then, you know, starting in the, it depends on when you measure the agricultural revolution, sort of 13th century, industrial revolution, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries, massive, massive increases in wealth, to the point where we can have these kinds of conversations and not, you know, be hunting for the last starving rabbit in the forest. And it's because we have, to a large degree, begun to more so than in the past respect things like property uh, and things like bans on, on assault and, and so on, right? Now, I mean, a lot of it has been displaced to a lot of statist mumbo jumbo muckery uh, in the financial world and in fiat currency and so on, but we have done a lot to bring about these basic moral rules in society, which is why we've had this massive increase in wealth. I mean, if you look at the basic rights of property available to the average citizen in modern Canada versus ancient Rome, I mean, it's night and day. I mean, ancient Rome, I don't remember the percentages. Um, it was, I think, 60, 70, or 80 percent slaves. So, massive violations of thou shalt not steal. Stole the whole person's life, made it turn them into property. 
You know, there's that old bit. Just, okay.